And what I think you and I need to understand is sin is not just the breaking of an abstract law, it is the violation of a person, the person of God. And unless we understand that, we will never see it in its personal relationship to God himself. So that when God gives the law, it is not as though he's looking to see who's going to be good in relation to the law and who's going to be bad in relation to the law, but who is going to recognize God for who he is and who isn't. And the lust of the flesh is the plundering, really, of that which is sacred and rendering it commonplace. And the principle of the lust of the flesh is basically the violation of God's law, mandated for the body, as it were. And so principally, I say to you, the lust of the flesh is the violation of the person of God. The lust of the eyes is greed. It basically takes that which is material and defines it as essentially spiritual. I was having breakfast with a fine businessman this morning, and I remember what he was saying as a brand new Christian. I found it very intriguing the way he said it. He said, I've lived for with guilt for a lot of time because somehow we are made to feel guilty because we make money. And he says, only now I'm beginning to understand how that money can be used for the honor and glory of God. And I think that's a tremendous perception. I do not believe any man needs to feel guilty about making money or possessing money, but we need to feel guilty if we are possessed by it and if that makes us. There's nothing wrong with the boat and the water. The problem begins when the water gets into the boat. It was all right so long as Lot's wife lived in Sodom. The problem began when Sodom began to live in her. And materialism is basically this, which says pursue, pursue, pursue greed for all you are worth and make material gains your ultimate pursuit. Before I became a preacher, I was the banqueting manager of a hotel in the city of Toronto. And every night I would see the lavish expenditure of money and celebration and food. 99 out of 100 times, you'd never see anybody bow his head there and thank God for that food. It was almost a kind of a self-acclaimed recognition that I brought this by my own hands. And when you're locked into the business world, that immense pressure closes in. Make it big, make it big, make it big. Pursue, 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 till you climb up that ladder ultimately and become the all-powerful individual. God says that is easier for the for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for a rich man not because the man is a possessor of riches but because in many instances it is hard to possess them and not be possessed by it but thanks be to God when the disciples looked at him and said Jesus if that is true then who can enter into the kingdom of God and Jesus said with man it's impossible but with God it isn't he is even able to take the wealthy and get them to realize that this is a blessing let me not make it a curse. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and lastly, the pride of life. The pride of life which basically says, I am so self-sufficient that I really do not need God. I am so self-sufficient, I really do not need God. I think there's one illustration that captures all of these three. It's a painting in Rochester, New York, of a man riding on a horse, holding on to the reins of the horse with one hand, reaching out for a jeweled crown with the other. And he's not able to grab the crown. It is eluding him, even though the horse is riding as hard as he can ride it. Underneath the hooves of the horse, he's trampling underfoot men, women, and children. But he cannot hear their screams because his eye is on that crown. And ladies and gentlemen, sin basically means to get your eyes off God, to get your eyes on the pursuit of merely earthly existence and where you become the center of all that is and man becomes the point of reference for you rather than God.